Hi, I'm Will McTavish from Link Reporting, and in this video, I'm gonna get you up and running on Link Reporting in less than 10 minutes. So we're gonna start off by looking at the WIP movement report, and that way we can get better visibility in our accounting practice by reading the work in progress movements. I'll take you through how we use different dates to view different information, and also the different groupings we can use to get visibility across different disciplines in our business. We're then gonna take a look at the team performance report so we can see the different metrics available for our team reporting, and also how we can group our staff into various teams, which is gonna give you really good insight into how our people are performing. We're then gonna look at how we schedule and send reports. So we can take reports and link reporting, configure them, and then schedule them to be sent to your inbox on a recurring basis. So let's jump in, and we'll check it out. So here we are on the dashboard in Link Reporting. Now the dashboard has been designed to give you a nice peaceful experience when you first log in. So we've got a couple of alpacas chewing grass and uh, some windmills in the background there. Now uh, up on the top right hand corner, we have a time and date stamp. Now that time and date stamp lets you know what time and date your data was last synced and reconciled with XPM. On the right hand side is all of our reports. So you've got your homepage we're on right now. Click on jobs, you see you've got our open job report. Clients is where we've got our client level reports, got our team reports in here, and our practice reports here. When you're just getting started, I'd really recommend sticking to two reports. One is under practice, our whip movement report. The other one is our team performance report. So we're gonna take a bit of a look at those today. So let's look at the whip movement report to get started. So when you jump into a report, you can always just hit run. We've designed the reports to be useful just by hitting run, but you can also update things in here. So for example, this report will run as the current month. If we hit run right now, it's gonna group this WIP report by job manager. If I hit show more, you can see I've got a lot of other options in here. You may just wanna keep it nice and simple for now though, and just stick with some of these default settings. So if I hit run, it's gonna show me my work in progress as at today's date. Excellent, what we can do once we run the report is we can sort these headings. So you think about what you're most interested in. Now, if I'm looking at the current month, I'm probably interested in what my current WIP balance is. So I can sort this report by closing WIP. Great, and I can see Johnny Joseph here has the highest WIP balance. So he started uh, this month on the 1st of June with $60,000 of WIP on across all his jobs. He's added $19,000 of time to his jobs, uh, $200 of cost or disbursements, We've invoiced only $182, there's been no write-ups and we've had a write-off of almost $800, giving us a closing WIP balance of $79,000. So what I can do is I can click on Johnny Joseph here and it's gonna to expand to show me all of the jobs. And you can see at the top here, Hemorrhage Harry Limited, we've added that amount of time to the job this month and that's our closing WIP on the job. So this gives us a beautiful representation of what's being worked on and where our work in progress is. You'll notice because I sorted the report by closing WIP from high to low, our first level grouping being the job manager is, is sorted by closing WIP. But if I expand, it's also gonna be that next level grouping, which is our job info. And you can see that if I hit show more, job info is that next level here. So that's how the groupings work. We've got two levels here, job manager and then job info. And I can also investigate any of these figures. If I wanna understand what that time was, I can click onto it and it'll drill me down, opens up a new tab for me to show me all of the timesheet entries that make up that amount. Another great way to run this report is by 12 months. So if I go last 12 months, I might be interested rather than uh, job manager and then uh, job info, I can change this to client. So this way I'm not gonna get every job, I'm just gonna get a summary by client. If I run this now, this shows me 12 months of data. So rather than being really interested in this closing WIP total, I might be interested in how much I've invoiced or what my write-ups or write-offs are at a, a job manager level and then also the clients. So let's sort this by invoiced. So over the past 12 months, I can see Ricky Robinson as the job manager has invoiced the most amount at 534,000. Now if I expand, I can see which clients have made up the most amount of the revenue. Sam Stations Limited by, and then King Jellybean. So I can see very quickly which of our clients make up the most amount of revenue by job manager. So this is a really good way to use this report is looking over 12 months, lets us see uh, where we're invoicing and where our write-ups and write-offs are occurring. So that's the WIP movement report. Have a good play around with that. Try some different, uh, Quick selects in the date range. Uh, last 12 months is a really good one. Uh, current month or last month are really good as well. And then also play around with these groupings. So the group by will give you your, your top level grouping. Then by will give you that next level down as you see we've got clients here. So really good report to get some visibility into what's happening uh, in your practice. Now, one more report I wanna show you here is if I go to team and then team performance. This report here is taking the billable amounts and the write-offs and it's displaying that at a staff member level. So if I hit run now, this is gonna show me my team's performance 
for last month grouped by the function that they do for our practice. Excellent, so I can see I've got my partners, my administration team, my uh, billable team, and then my managers. So you gotta think about what are we interested in? We're interested in write-offs. So if I sort this report by net write-ups, you can see that the billable team has written off $14,000 in May, which was last month. And I can expand to see all the staff that make up those figures. And I can see Billy Burns had the largest amount of write-offs all the way down to $2,700 of write-ups for Ted Thompson. So we may wanna investigate some of these figures. So if we click on this write-offs by Billy Burns, it's gonna show me uh, which jobs make up those amounts. And I can scroll through and see if I can notice any patterns here. So I can see quite a big write-off for uh, Big Ray and the Red Lobster Limited for that annual accounts job. There was 2,752 written off. So these are some really good conversations I can be having with my team based on this information. So what we've got here uh, to, to break out this report is we've got the billable amount of hours completed in the month. We've got the non-billable hours, the total time that was worked. We've got our productivity, how that compares to everyone else in the group, the billable amount of WIP that was done, the net write-ups that have been apportioned to that staff member, how they compare, the revenue that was generated, and we calculate revenue by taking the billable WIP and adjusting by the net write-ups in that period, which gives us our revenue. Bear in mind that this is different to invoiced in period. So if we were to run a WIP report, we're gonna have a different figure here for our revenue than we'll have for our invoice back in the WIP report. And that's because we're taking the billable and adjusting by the net write-ups to get the revenue. It's not what was actually invoiced. And that's because we can't apply invoices directly to a staff member. And it's because it gets complicated when we start raising deposits. If we raise the $10,000 deposit, we have nowhere to apply that deposit. Uh, to a staff member until they've done the work, which is why we take the billable whip and adjust by the write-offs to get our revenue in a period. We also have our ROI and our average hourly rate. So ROI is taking the revenue and dividing by the cost of that staff member. Now average hourly rate is taking the revenue and divided by total time. Now there are a few things that are not on this report. If I go show more, add and remove fields, there's some other really good fields in here, such as our cost, our profit, uh, and some other comparisons in here. So if you wanna see a bit more information, you can check those. What's really cool as well is we can schedule these reports. So if I go to schedule, I can schedule this report to be sent. So if I put in a report name, then I can add multiple email addresses in here, select a date that I want the report to be sent. So let's say I want this to be sent on the 5th of each month, and I want to send it as a PDF that's now gonna be sent to my inbox on the 5th of every month. So we can go through and create a whole lot of scheduled reports to be sent to all of our team. And what's really cool about schedule and send is if we sort a report, it's gonna retain that sort when it gets sent. And also, you can also add and remove fields. So if we don't wanna show certain information that we send to our team, we can add and remove fields before we schedule the report. And that's gonna retain uh, exactly what has been set out in the UI here. Now the last thing I wanna to touch on before we finish up is how we set people into these groups. So as you see here, we've got the billable team, we've got the managers, the partners, and the admin. If I go into the top right-hand corner and go into my settings, click on mappings, I've got my staff mappings here. So this is how my team has been set up. So I've got function, role, team, and office. I've created those four groups by going manage staff criteria, and I've created them in here. Now if I want to allocate a person to a group, really simple, I can just free text it into one of these boxes. Now if I don't have anything set against any of, the, of one of the team members, it means they won't show in my staff report. So Alison Anderson no longer works for us, so I've got no mapping set in here, which means she's not gonna show in our team reports. So there's a very quick overview of link reporting to get you started. So the key thing is go and use that WIP movement report, play around with the different groupings and the different dates. Also take a look at the team performance report. And for that to work, we need to go and map our staff to the relevant groups. And you do that by going up in the top right hand corner, click on the three dots, go to our staff mappings, then go allocate our team to those groups. So I hope that was useful and I'll see you in the next video.